Hi, today I'm going to be reviewing a series called An Idiot Abroad, specifically the Egypt episode of that series, suggested by one of you guys. Thank you Richard McRichard for the suggestion, and also for telling me what episode to look at exactly. When giving me requests for content guys, please try to include any useful details like this, or where to find what you want me to review. It makes my job so much easier. I've already watched it on my own to see if it's worth making a video about, and I found it pretty entertaining, so here we are. I think you can chalk that up to bad life choices. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it again now with you guys and give my thoughts on it as we go. Also, it was published in 2017, that's five years ago. So things were not as bad as they are right now, so keep that in mind. It's quite lengthy, so let's jump right in. The Seven Wonders of the World Holy man's greatest achievements But there's one man who sees them differently It's like a pylon to them <laughs> Carl Pilkington Moron, I think. He is a round Empty-headed, chimp-like, mank, moron, buffoon, idiot. And he's a friend. Just think it'd be amazing to send him around the world. What we'd like to see is him experience other cultures, other peoples, and see if in any way we can change his outlook on the world. I want him to hate it. I want him to hate every minute of it for my own amusement. Okay, so to set the scene here, this is the premise of the series, I guess. And this guy is such a dick, actually, to the other guy. But I'm guessing it's just for show. Maybe all this is scripted. I don't really know. But it is funny anyway, so... Right, Carl. We've arranged for you to go to Egypt to see the, the Great Pyramids. I mean, that is a remarkable sight. Truly one of the seven wonders of the world. Now, what do you know about the Great Over Pyramids? Over 4,000 years old. 4,000 years old. Are they the oldest thing on the world? <laughs> yeah, they're the oldest thing on the world. I mean, that's pretty amazing. That I'm going to see the oldest thing on the world. Okay, this has to be scripted. Come on. I hope this is scripted. No one can be this oblivious. Please tell me this is scripted. They're not the oldest thing on the world, are they? How do you think they built it? Just took the time. Didn't have any distractions. Well, technically he's not wrong. I mean, he didn't give any details, but that's basically what they did. They took their time with it. This shit took years to build. Back then, they'd just be going, this is what we've got to do. Get it done, get it built. Go for that shape. And, and each day they would have well, just... Well, they were like, the foreman went, go for that shape. And they went, all right. Yeah. Well, to be honest, the guy is an idiot. So the name of the series was pretty well chosen. You guys will see later in the episode. Right, go on then, enjoy the pyramids. I think we've got to send him economy. I think we've got to put him up in shacks and awful hotels, and that will be funny. It's not good, is it? This is grim round here. And something looks grim in the dark. You know, it's not going to be better in the day, don't you? we've established already on this channel, Egypt is not the best looking country to begin with, especially outside of luxury areas, so of course it looks grim. This has been a reality for as long as I have been alive, so it's nothing new, it has always looked ugly. It just got even worse now, somehow. We had to hear Michael Payne, Monty Python. And has he been back since? Uh, no, not no. Don't blame him, it's not a place you visit twice, if you ask me. Not even a place you visit once, but... How long are we here? Huh? How long are we here for? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what... I mean, it's, this, is, this is a bit of a... It's a little bit... grim. Look at it. Did Ricky and Steve know this was... Well, they knew Michael Palin stayed here. Yeah, I know, but it was, you know, it was 30 years ago. A lot's changed. That's true. But also, this room is not the worst you could get into here. Trust me. It's not great, but it could be a lot worse. There's a, there's a piano right outside the room. Well, why, why do they start playing that piano? Because it's literally right there. If they start having a sing-along, I'm... Uh, 
highly doubt it even works. Probably they're just for looks. It's Egypt. Looks, above all. Yeah, but seriously, I would. I get it. You don't need to have a functional piano. It's decorative. Jesus Christ. Sit on that. Sit on that. Is there a mattress on it? Sit on that. Honest to God, sit on that. It is unbelievable. Oh, God. Also, I forgot to mention that these guys, if you haven't noticed by now, are British, which, in my opinion, makes this ten times funnier. I love their accents and the way they speak. Nothing against them, it's just funny to me. I'm sorry. I'm going to sleep. It's a bit cosy, you know? Ricky will be happy. Ricky will be over the moon with this when he sees this because he wanted to annoy me. I don't know how this is teaching me anything about sort of, you know, being Egyptian. Well, in terms of learning to be Egyptian, this is actually first-hand experience. Deluded, of course, because he's just visiting, but this could very well represent many people's lives here, more or less. I mean, the fella who owns the place, his dad's 96. There's no way you live to be 96 by living on a bed like that in a damp room like this. Well, maybe not, maybe not, but damn, 96, that's impressive. Good on him. I've been there at it all night, bibbing. Rewatched this bit like 10 times so far, and I honestly can't figure out what he's saying, so I am I have nothing to say, I guess. What the fuck, my mask was all weird. That's better. I don't know what I'm meant to be doing today. Because I haven't heard from Ricky and Steve yet, so I'm, I'm just going to go, you know, go out for a wander, uh, walk about, deal with some locals, you know. And that's the plan, really. Not a great plan, I'll have to say. No, oh, thanks, mate, you're all right. That's the drink. A what? All the drink is 10 pounds. He's out of line, but he's right. Coca Cola, Sprite, water, tea, cafe, cafe, cappuccino, mango, lemon, orange, beer, all the drink, 10 pounds. His first mistake is that he stopped for someone calling him over. You don't do that here. You're about to see why. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all right at the moment. Well, I might, I might pop in later on. My name is Sharif, okay? Sharif. Sharif. Okay, fun fact. Sharif means honorable or could also mean honest. A lot of Arabic names here have meanings like that. Welcome to Egypt. Cheers, Welcome Sharif. Here, okay? I'll be there for a drink. Same if I want, I, if I, want to, if I want to get a drink. Cheers. No, it's all right. I've just had a word with Sharif. He's he's gonna look after me when I. What is this? Sharif. Sharif. No coffee. This eat. That's eat. Yes. Okay. So if I want a drink, see you and see you for something to eat. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Bye bye. Oh, yeah. Bye bye. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. okay, have a nice time. I will do. No Thanks problem. a lot. Cheers. Come back here and no no okay no problem. If I want a my drink or something. My name's Sharif. Sh he's Sharif, Sharif no, as well. No. My name's Sharif. I'm my Sharif. Oh my Sharif. My Sharif. Sharif. I'm my Sharif. Okay, so at this point, I'm 99% sure they're trolling him because Omar Sharif. I mean, he could be actually named that, but also that's a famous actor, and I'm pretty sure this guy hasn't heard of him, but he is pretty well known, and he's even starred in foreign movies, not just Egyptian. This book's no. I'll pop in here if I'm hungry. Okay, man. All right. You want me? Okay, as pointless as it is because you don't get anything they're saying, it's impressive what waiters here do. They all do actually list their menu like that, and it's almost like they're rapping to you. But it's impressive nonetheless. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not hungry at the moment. All right. I'm, 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 honestly, it's all right. Yeah, all right. Okay, I'm definitely sure they're trolling him now. I don't even know how to translate what he said, but to any Egyptians watching, you know what he said? It's, it's a you have to be there kind of thing, you know? All right, all right. What do you want? What do you want? Say again? What do you want? Drink? I'm just, I'm just walking through. If I get thirsty, I'll pop by. Jesus. Do you know what? I've, I'm I'm not that hungry at the moment. Yes. Yeah, I was back there. I've sort of gone off food a little bit. I'm I'm okay at the moment. Seven, All right. Nine. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Jesus Christ. 
so that's like five guys right. so far who have stopped and talked to him that's why you don't stop when you're not interested you just keep walking on and they know to stop after you walk by them at a certain distance that's just how it goes here because if you stop for and this happens and one replaces another and it's just never ending so as you see hassle hasn't changed much here in the past five years It's been here all along anyway, but it hasn't gone away or anything, God forbid. I've, I've already got some. Don't smoke. If I wanted a watch, I'd, I'd buy one off you. Don't need. What? I, d I don't need any glasses. Yeah, when you're near a market like that, people are just gonna keep ask, offering you stuff to buy, like pop-up ads, basically. You just have to keep clicking close on each one. Is that okay to say? Am I being too mean? Whatever. Jesus Christ. Okay, cat. That's cute. At least the cat is not gonna hassle him for anything. It's offering him love and pets. It's probably the only one here who's offering him something for free. Well, remember guys, cats better than people. If there's one thing that's done me head in since I've been here, it's all this. You can't walk down here. Forget like just using it as a cut through. Because it's not a shortcut. It can't be a shortcut because you get stopped every few seconds. You alright? So, I mean, I, I bet she left the house when she was 10. <laughs> okay, that's, that's a good joke. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yes, these markets like that are a pretty huge pain in the ass to walk through. If you, like, you could use them as a shortcut if you don't stop for anyone, but you just have to get used to getting called over and offered shit non-stop if you're gonna walk through one. I tell you, seriously, it takes you forever to get anything done here. Yes, very true. Not just about transportation or like getting around or anything. Everything here takes ages longer than it needs to. I not sleep at all. Um, well, I'm gonna go over and see the pyramids today. That's the plan, that's why I'm in Egypt, isn't it? I mean, I, I wish I could have seen them sooner. You know, the sooner I see them, the sooner I can go home, but um, yeah, Steve sorted out some local bloke who's got a camel. He's gonna take me over there on one of them. Again with the camels? Yeah, yes, it's pretty common there. It's one of the main activities around the pyramid area. When I was younger, I got an horse and someone sort of burnt the horse's ass with a fag end and... Sorry, what? Come again? Oh wait, 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 I remember this. Someone commented about it in my old video, I see. Yeah, 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 that's right. It's what they call cigarettes in the UK. I get it now, I get it. He didn't mean it like I thought he did. It bolted and I was on, on it and falling off the edge. So I've always said I've never gone any animal that's sort of bigger than me. Yeah, that's fair. I share this sentiment. I don't like riding something that has a mind of its own. Riding someone, however, so it's a little bit crazy, but it seems to be the way they get around here anyway. They're all using uh, donkeys and camels, and so as long as nobody's named it with a fag end. Stop calling it that. <laughs> I don't want to get demonetized. I should be all right, really. It's crazy here, though, isn't it? It's a non-touristy bit, isn't it? This is, this is what it's all about. Actually, this, like I can see in the background, this looks like one of the war areas in Cairo, or maybe the non-government land ones. You could call them slums, but it's not really slummy. It's just chaotic, I guess, and not exactly fancy. So this is, in a way, first-hand experience of Egyptian life in Cairo. At least for a fair share of the population. Of course, not everyone lives like this. So, uh, yeah, meeting this fella. Uh, need to use his toilet straight away. Is that rude? No, it should be all right. It's kind of rude to ask right away, so you should at least introduce yourself and talk a bit, then you can ask. Otherwise, it, I mean, he's not gonna say anything, but it's not polite to do that here. Also, when you ask, say, where is the bathroom? Don't ask, like, I need to use the bathroom. You have to make it indirect. I don't really know why, but that's just how it is here. Here's a quick etiquette lesson for you. Mahmoud. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm Carl. You're welcome. All right. Come in. How are you doing? Do you mind if I, I, if I use your toilet quickly? It's just that what? I've drank a lot of coffee this morning. I'm dying for the, for the so week. That's my family here. As you see, he just pretended not to hear it, or maybe he actually didn't, but he didn't bother to ask about what he just said anyway. So don't ask straight away for the toilet. Just don't. Someone you know closely, of course, then you can do whatever. I'm not going to tell you how to interact with your friends, but for someone you have meeting for the first time, it's not polite to ask for a toilet straight away. Hello. Hello. Who's, who's that? Cooking tea. 
Is that your girlfriend or? She's my mother. Your mother? People don't get girlfriends here. That's, that's not how it works here at all. And even if she was his girlfriend or wife, I guess you could say, he wouldn't probably introduce her straight away to him. People are kind of awkward about their women here. Come on, man. She's not your mother. She is. Can I ask how old she is? She's 38. Kind of looks a little too old for 38. I'm not trying to be rude, I'm just saying I didn't expect her to be that young. Well, given the fact that her son is a grown ass man with a full beard. She is my mother. In our family, we married when we were very young. How old are you? I'm 22 and I have a child. So wait, 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 wait. He's 22 and she's 38? So she had him when she was like, what, 16? Huh, that's kind of fucked up. But I, I mean, they do that here in poor areas, so it's not really a surprise, but kind of expected it to be more in the countryside. Didn't expect to find it in the city, but apparently it exists there too. I knew you did that. That's better. That's me. I'm a wife. I'm kind of surprised he's showing him this photo of her because her arms are showing and she's got a little bit of her chest showing and her hair, which is not very Muslim like. I mean, nothing wrong with it, but I'm just surprised because this guy is clearly Muslim, so he shouldn't. Or like, you wouldn't expect him to do that. Is that it now for life? Are you settled now? You'll just stay with this woman? I can have one if I want. If I feel like I want one, well, I can. There are four women. You're allowed four women? Yes, four women I can have if I want to. That's in Islam. It's supposed to have conditions on it. For, like, it's not just all nilly-willy. One can marry four women, but obviously no one follows that regulation. <laughs> Nitpick the parts they want and leave the rest. But I'm happy till now, but I don't know what will get happen. Well, pace tomorrow. yourself. I mean, you're only 22. Oh. Spread it out a little bit, you know. Carl got it wrong here. He, may, I think he thinks this guy is allowed to marry like four women in his life, not four simultaneous. That's how it is. Like you can marry and remarry however many times you want, but like you can only have up to four at once. Also, I probably shouldn't do that. That's not a nice political sign here. Do you know like how Snow White had like a happy midget, miserable one? She had like a mixture. Would you go for a totally different woman? So that if you're in the mood for someone to be happy, you go, oh, I'll see her today. Yes. Life is too short, man. I obviously disagree. It's fucked up how they objectify women here like this, but it is what it is, unfortunately. No point talking about it again. One, two, three. Hang on a minute. <sighs> Hold on tight on here. This guy's English seems decent. It's a little bit broken here and there, but it's pretty understandable and he doesn't stutter much, so kudos to this guy for making everything easier for me and for Carl here. Whoa! Jesus. We just need to hold well. I'm holding on. Alright. The bollocks. The bollocks are squashed. <laughs> bollocks? This word makes me laugh for some reason, I don't know. I'm not 12, I promise. Is that you or the camel? Huh? Is that you? What? That sounded human. That's the camel, man. <laughs> Hey, no shame if it was you. Well, you know, a bit of a rocking left and right makes things happen. What you got to remember is I'm getting the back draft. Do you know the rule? First one to call it is the one who did it. Reverse psychology. It's chronic, isn't it, today? You can't even see the pyramids. Come all this way and, and that's the view you get. It is pretty unfortunate timing for the sandstorm to come, but, well, you can just go closer. I don't know why he didn't. I mean, the idea is now that I stand there and I'm blown away. That's, that's what's meant to happen, isn't it? I mean, I am getting blown away, but mainly by the, by the wind that's going on here. We've got a sandstorm on, I've got sand in my eyes. I can't see anything anyway, even if it was a clear day. I, it's a bit annoying. You know, I thought it'd feel more special than this. Well, I haven't been to the pyramids as a grown-up, but when I did go as a kid, it, I didn't find it impressive either. So maybe this says something about him?
But also, like, for me, at least, as an Egyptian, like, this stuff is just around me all the time and doesn't really affect my life in any way. I never bother to go visit any of these places. It's just like, oh, yeah, that's cool. We have this. We have that. It's there. It's just... It's pointless to me, it doesn't interest me as much because it's just always there. We always say, yeah, wow, it's so cool, you live near the pyramids, you have the Nile, you have this, you have that. I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't affect my life in any way. It's literally pointless, it just looks cool for the first few times you see it, and then it's just there all the time. Well, not the Nile, the Nile is very helpful, but the other stuff isn't, <laughs> unless you work in tourism, that is. And then I'm also getting messages, I'll show you this one from Ricky, he just keeps sending stuff because he knows it costs me money to receive them. He's just sent one here, 70 pence. Because he knows that it's cost me about 70p for him to send that. There's nothing else in there, he's not asking how are you? You know, what are you up to, what have you seen? Are you enjoying it? 70p, that's all he said. That's a dick move, but it's, it's, it's funny, come on. Also, wait a minute, 2009? <laughs> This was posted in 2017, holy shit, I didn't notice this the first time I saw this. Damn, they posted this nine, eight, wow, nine, eight years later? Quick mess! So why are you wearing this now? It's, it's just comfy wear, isn't it? I mean, this is, is like pyjamas at the end of the day. That's the first time I've seen someone call them pajamas. Usually people call them dresses because they look like dresses. So this is a new one. I've never heard this one before. And the worst part is both arguments have a very solid point. It does look like a pajama and it is technically a dress. I mean, the problem is I've been getting mozzie bites and stuff. So I wanted something with sort of longer sleeves on it to sort of keep them away. Mosquitoes suck. I have a bite right here. Coincidentally. Uh, it's just comfy. Loads of room in it. Normally pyjamas sort of roll up your arms and your legs and that, but this is, you know, it's all right, isn't it? I personally hate these. I don't own any that I use, but they kind of are comfortable, I have to admit. But if you take wide steps or, God forbid, try to jump over something, you're going to either rip it or trip or both. So, yeah, they're not very athletic. The only up for them is how airy they are to wear. Get the ventilation to all the business downstairs. I mean, that's a good thing if you lived here, you could just sort of, if you start work at nine, you get out of bed about five to keep it on, straight off. Steve sent me a text and said meet up with a lad called Ahmed. Not how you say his name, is Ahmed or Ahmed, if you want to say it in English. Ahmed is just weird. We're all used to our names being butchered by foreigners, so it's no big deal, really. He didn't even comment on it, I'm pretty sure, because throughout all of this, he keeps calling him that, and the guy just doesn't say anything. He's going to show me around the place. Good one. Right. Yeah. Yeah, here's a gap. What do you reckon? Yeah? Good job. Easy. Now you're in yeah, crossing the street on a busy day here is a pretty big deal because you don't have many lights and even there you could still get run over anyway, but it's less likely. But if you have to cross somewhere where there isn't a light, which is not a rare occurrence at all, you have to basically time it between traffic and find when there's gaps. So it's pretty risky on big roads. If you saw that at home, you presume it was a pet shop. What's a pet shop? Oh, Animals that you no, buy, no, no. that's for food. It's all little food. So when you look at that, do you go, hmm, rather than, ah, uh, well, yeah, they eat them. They eat rabbits here. They look too cute, to be honest, for me. What's this stuff? A cotton. You feel? Egyptian cotton. So what would people do with this? For mattresses. I could do with that, actually, at the hotel. <laughs> well, no. You wouldn't like it either. Pure cotton mattresses are hot as a rock, especially after they get squashed, which they inevitably do. You need to keep it fluffy and soft. You have to keep ripping it open every few weeks or so and kind of fluffing it up and then putting it back in, which is a pain in the ass. So just don't get a cotton mattress. Get a metal one with springs like everyone else. We'll do a bit of practice about haggling. You need to haggle, otherwise you will get ripped off. There 
it is. I was wondering if they would ever get to this. This guy knows what he's doing. If he talks to your, his guest about this, then you can trust him. Hey, my friend. How can I take your money? Thank you. <laughs> oh, I Sir, give $1,000, say it, please. <laughs> Welcome to Cairo. Welcome. <laughs> It's very common to troll foreigners here as they walk by like this. Well, it's annoying as fuck, but it's not aggressive or anything to be afraid of. It's just annoying. You just have to deal with it. And it's even worse with the little kids. You, oh God, I hate little kids that I walk up to you on the street. You must be able to go lower than 160. 160 is nothing. What about 90? <laughs> you want to get it for free? No, never mind. You are a very clever guy, but I don't agree with your price. He's obviously pretty bad at it and he's just doing too much, but he kind of got the core concept down at least i don't even know if either is a fair price for that but cutting like almost half of it is a bit extreme in some cases that's my impression i could be totally wrong i have no clue about the prices of this thing we'll get money off with the nose missing the original has the nose missing the sphinx doesn't have a nose it's broken so that's actually a pretty accurate replica We're not gonna talk about that last one, but it's very common here. I've seen them myself and almost everywhere. I've gone that sells these kind of statues. Well, I've been out all day, you know, seeing how the locals live, which is what it's all about. Thought the day was coming to an end. Thought I'd be able to, you know, relax a little bit. And I've just got a message from Ricky and Steve saying they've sorted out a place for me to have my tea tonight, which is a bit of a worry. I'll get you the special of the day. Typical Egyptian food. Yeah. Cheers, thanks a lot. Ah, uh, it's this stuff again. Well, you guys have already seen it when I talk about the best ever food review show. But if you're here for the first time, well, you're in for a treat, literally. I would have loved just uh, chicken and chips. Just something not too challenging. So just you wait. I've never experimented that much. Yeah. All right. Come in. I got a bit of a taste of that at the end, and I'm sure I knew what it was. I just have a, have a bit again. I'm okay. sure I've had it before. Okay. It's rubbery. Rubbery. Chewy. <laughs> the smile on this guy's face, he's like, I know you have never had this before. I love it. <laughs> Quite beefy. How about testicle? That's a testicle. Aha. Uh -huh. And the chewy one, penis. <laughs> the shark. <laughs> this is priceless. Cock and bollocks, couple of eyes, a uh, bit of tongue, you know, for garnish. I never thought I'd be saying that. It's supposed to be good for you as a male. But why, why do you use everything to that degree? We kind of eat everything, nothing goes to waste. And besides, it's delicious. Well, out, out of, yeah, I said, well, I didn't say delicious. Said. I didn't say delicious. Oh, okay. you, you put, put words in your mouth as, along with other things. <laughs> this guy's such an idiot. I love it. He's funny. How is it? How's the hotel? It's, uh... Can you hear that? <laughs> what was the noise? It's just, it's just car horns and that. Constant. You just, you, you just can't escape noise in Egypt. If you're in the city, there's going to be noise one way or another. When I watch videos of people from Europe or America or whatever, it's almost disturbingly quiet for me because I'm not used to it. I'm used to there's always car horns, people shouting, people talking, stuff going on. There's always background noise, but there it just, it's all quiet. It's all so peaceful. It's almost uncanny to me. Almost anyone who visits Egypt has to comment on the noise at some point in their visit because it's just so bizarre to them. <laughs> Anyway, the hotel is pretty depressing. We never said it was going to be all luxury. You'll see, you've got to see the real Egypt, haven't you? I'm sick of this. Can we speed it up? This is getting quite long, so I might end up splitting it into two parts. So if you're seeing this, that means I decided to do so. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.